Hello and welcome to the shed. In today's video, we're going to be freehand sharpening a chisel. Hope you enjoy. So, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I really like the Veritas Honing Guide. But today I wanted to show you how to freehand sharpen because I believe there's a lot of benefit to learning how to freehand sharpen. And if you do stuff things up a little bit, you can just go back to the jig. Now, the benefits I see of freehand sharpening is that it does speed up your ability to sharpen. You're probably more likely to go back and sharpen. And learning how to freehand sharpen a chisel also then allows you to sort of move into other tools that you can't hold in a jig, like carving gouges and, and the like there, and maybe some other specialist blades that you get in some molding planes. Today I'm going to be sharpening a one inch chisel and as I said in my previous video with the knife sharpening, I'm going to be using the one inch chisel because you end up with a larger bevel, more bevel, more reference, easier to learn. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you would have seen that quite often I use my stone holder. Now in this case, I'm still using my water stones, except I've just got a little bit of non-slip here and I'm going to sharpen straight one after the other through the grits. And when you freehand sharpen, you can do that because you're not putting as much pressure down on the stone and it's much easier for your stones just to stay put. Now, obviously I've already gone ahead and flattened these water stones. I always keep them flat, just using a diamond stone. So if you want to see me doing that, um, I'll leave a couple of links down below to some of my other sharpening videos where I go through the whole process of using the Veritas Honing Guide, flattening the stones, etc. But today we're just going to be sharpening a one inch chisel this is a fairly inexpensive Lubin chisel. Uh, what I want to do is just bring you in and I'll talk you through how I'm going to go about it and some of the different mechanisms that uh, come into play when you're freehand sharpening. Now before I start, I just wanted to let you know this one has been reground at some point to 30 degrees on the Tormex. That can be very useful when you're first starting freehand sharpening, having a concave grind on your chisel because what it does, because it's rounded like this, so you've got a curve, so you get this rounded profile and you have one point at the cutting edge and one point at the back of the bevel. So that allows you to know when you're referencing because you're, you're on two points rather than a flat area where you're not sure where, where that sort of contact is. Uh, when you've got two points like that, it's a very positive contact and it does make it easier to at least start to learn the way to hold the chisel and sharpen and still get great results. So, of course, when it comes to freehand sharpening, you're obviously looking for positive contact on your bevel to know that you're cutting to the, the right onto the cutting edge. Now, when it comes to this, if when you've got uh, water, oil, or any sort of lubricant on your stones, no matter the stones you're using, you'll know that you're making contact because you can actually see the water in front of your blade moving. Now, that is very difficult to show you on camera, but if you go out and actually try this yourself, you will see that when you're sharpening right on that cutting edge, you're definitely moving that water in front of your chisel, so you know that you're actually cutting right to that cutting edge. So there are a couple of different techniques you need to know when you're freehand sharpening with a chisel. Now, the first way that you can do it is obviously you can hold it where you want it and you can move in your arms and your elbows. And that's how a lot of people first start. And they find that they're getting a lot of problems with doing that. Now, I'm sure if you do that for a long period of time, you'll get used to it. You can hold it uh, and you'll have no problems freehand sharpening. However, when you're first starting and the way I like to do it and the way I sort of learned to do it was that we come in and we're sort of making a jig in holding it with our body. So you're bringing your elbows in against your hips or against your side, locking that in place. Then you're bringing your chisel down and feel for that bevel. Once you've got that, you're locking your wrists in place. And now you're locked in a jig. Now to sharpen from here, you just rock at the hips back and forwards. And if you can't, sharpen right through your stone you can bring it right to the edge of your bench and you should be able to get good movement through your stone and you'll find that because your body's locked in this position you're going to have much fewer problems when it comes to sharpening. The other thing that can occur is that you end up with a rolled bevel when you're freehand sharpening because 
you don't necessarily, or you might not necessarily keep that bevel in contact with the stone the entire way, right to that cutting edge. So the front part of your, your chisel might be touching and as you move through, it might rock up and lift the cutting edge off your stone. And then when you bring it back, it's bringing that cut edge back to the stone. And that's a perfectly good technique. I've seen other YouTubers like Paul Sellers do this technique. And I'll leave a link to his video down below where he does his sharpening, just so you can learn from someone who's been doing it for a very long time. So now that we know the different ways to hold the chisel and the way I recommend holding the chisel, let's just go ahead and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to freehand sharpen and the great results we can get and how much quicker it can be than using obviously a sharpening jig to actually go from stone to stone to stone and while there's nothing stopping you from laying all your stones out when you're using one of the jigs because you're rolling on top of the jig I find you really do need that stone holder and it's just a little bit slower process to go from stone to stone. Just as normal when I use any water stones obviously you can use whatever stones you like uh, you've got to be a little more careful with some softer stones when you're freehand sharpening that you don't dig that edge in and really damage your stone. But you're feeling for the bevel, so that shouldn't be a problem. So what we're doing is we're just keeping our stones wet. And obviously if you're struggling, we can use some Sharpie on here. So you can see we've got our whole bevel done. So now we're going to come in, elbows locked into sides. We've got that down on here. We're locking it and I'm going to move at the hips. So you can see here that all that sharp is gone which means we're making contact right the way across. There's no burr there currently which means we need to sharpen a little bit longer. Now when you hold it you can also hold it on an angle like this if it's easier for you to sort of lock onto it and move it or you can come like front on. I find a little angle like this as long as you're holding that bevel down, getting pressure right across the bevel, as you can see here. If you want to freehand and not lock your elbows, I find you can sharpen a little bit faster not locking your elbows, but when you're first learning, definitely lock those elbows. So now, don't know if you can see that on the camera here, but we have a little fine burr right along the back here. So we can move on to the next stone. Come in here first. Make sure the burr's gone. Then we move the same in here. Now I can already feel a burr, which means we're ready to move on to the last one. Lock it down. Burr removed. So you can see when I'm sharpening this, I'm keeping full pressure across the blade. You want to make sure you've got full contact. Please do excuse the rain. Got a fine bevel all the way across, back onto the same stone. Remove that burr. Now that we're sharpened there, we're ready to move on. So again, as usual, with the strop, you can use it with or without honing compound. So let's jump in and we'll finally polish this chisel up. Okay, so the usual way we're doing this, you're holding it to the angle, pulling through, making sure you're not digging that front end too much and rolling that edge. And we're going to do 50 times. So we can see here that we've got a nice shiny edge here. And if you look closely at this, you'll see that it's not smooth all the way through and we've still got the grinder marks here. Now that was from when I reground this to 30 degrees on the Tormac gives it a little bit of a, a concave grind as I mentioned at the start. So you can see 
point of contact here, point of contact there, but where we're right at the cutting edge, you can see how shiny that blade is, which means that it's nice and sharp. So now we're going to go ahead and do about 20 on the back to ensure that the burr that might have come from the honing on the strop on the other side is moved back and removed. That's about 22. So this side's not usually as shiny. I don't worry too much about this side being super shiny, but it's it's shiny enough. And now I do 10 times, one, 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 one. So we go one side, one side, one side, one side, 10 times. Now that's just also ensuring that burr's really gone and we're just whipping that burr back and forwards, back and forwards from the bevel to the back, to the bevel to the back to ensure that there is no burr. Two, ten. So now we're finished sharpening, and you can see that that was a very, very quick process, freehand sharpening. So let's how sharp. Let's see how sharp we got it, and we'll test it on a piece of pine, which is a really good indicator of how sharp we are. As pine is such a soft timber, if it's not cutting nice and clean, it's not very sharp. All right, so I've got a nice piece of pine here. It's very rough on the surface. It's a bit of radiata pine, which is usually a pain for any chisel that is not sharp. So let's see what we can do here. So you can see how nice and smooth and almost polished this pine is here, which means that we have a very, very sharp chisel. It also means that we're going to take nice little feather cuts on the corner like this. So I think that little demonstration there proved that we can get a very, very sharp chisel freehand sharpening and that it's difficult to learn to freehand sharpen, but it's freeing in some ways, especially for things like chisels, to learn how to freehand sharpen and speed up your workflow and make sure that you're always maintaining a nice sharp chisel. Of course, what I didn't mention there is that using a strop becomes your friend to prevent having to go back to the stones regularly to sharpen. But, you know, we don't always keep doing what we should do to maintain them. So I find I end up going back to the stones more than I'd like. And if you're freehand sharpening and able to keep your stones just set up, it really does speed up your workflow. So if you like this video and you'd like to see some more great hand tool sharpening videos, please check out this playlist just here. And I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all my current patrons on Patreon for your continued support. It's much appreciated. If any of you out there would like to continue to, to support me and help me keep making these videos, please consider checking out my Patreon. Links in the description below. And please check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Bye for now.